This lesson deals with element constraints. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 2, starting on page 1. In Chapter 2, we're going to take a look at basic circuit analysis. And to do that, we're going to start with some definitions of element constraints. The interconnection of two or more electrical devices is called an electrical network. If an electrical network contains at least one closed path, then it's called a circuit. A closed path exists if starting at one interconnection point, you can return to this interconnection point without traversing an electrical device more than once. Let me explain what that means with an example. Suppose I started at this electrical interconnection point. I can come back to it by passing through these four elements, but not going through them more than once. I could also come back through it this way. This is what's called a circuit. Here's an example of something that's not a circuit. If I were to start at this electrical connection point, I can't come back to it without going through, in this case, these two elements twice. So these are both electrical networks, but this is not a circuit, and this one is a circuit. Our next definition is that of a device. An electrical device is a component that is treated as a separate entity. Two terminal devices are represented in general by a rectangular box with these wires connected to it. What these mean is that there's something else hooked up here. We're just using this as a shorthand notation. Our next definition is called circuit element. To distinguish between a real device and its idealized model, the model will be called a circuit element. Our first circuit element is called a resistance element, or just simply resistance. This is the electrical symbol for a resistance. It's a series of lines. We're going to label the voltage and the current absorbing power. And then we'll label this uh, as R, and it's going to mean resistance. The relationship between voltage and current is here. It's at V is equal to I times R. We can also solve this equation for I. I is equal to V over R. And then if we were to plot this with voltage on the x-axis and current on the y-axis, this would be the equation of a straight line passing through the origin with a slope of 1 over R. These two equations are called Ohm's Law. And they, were, they were first observed by a German physicist and mathematician named George Simon Ohm. We can see from our equation here, the units of resistance would be voltage divided by current, so volts per amp. Many of these were renamed for the person who discovered the relationships. In this case, it was Ohm, and so we call this a unit of Ohm or Ohms. Sometimes it's convenient to use the second equation that we had from Ohm's Law, and there was an I is equal to V divided by R. And we could define 1 over R as a new term. We're going to call that conductance. That's just a reciprocal of resistance. Sometimes it's convenient to use that form of Ohm's Law versus the first one, V equals IR. We'll see examples as we go through the course. Again, the units here would be the reciprocal of what we had before, which is amps per volt. And this was renamed for a German inventor whose name was Ernst Werner von Siemens. He was also the founder of the Siemens Corporation, which is a very large electrical and telecommunications company in Europe. Besides the unit of Siemens, there's also another unit that's sometimes used in textbooks. And it's actually the word Mo, and it's uh, Ohm spelled backwards. We also take a look at some of our power relationships, because power is voltage times current. But remember, V is equal to IR, so then we could also write power as I squared times R. Or we could substitute in that I is equal to V over R and get V squared over R. So power can be voltage times current, I squared R, or V squared over R. So we've got three different ways of calculating that. What's interesting here with the I squared and the V squared is that this implies that resistance can only absorb power. This will be important as you looked at some other components in the rest of the course. These are some of the properties of element constraints. 